The PJ Flex Show is brought to you by Cup Foods and Affinity Plus. I want our team's message because nobody's seen it yet. Now, it's the PJ Flex Show with Pierre Nugent, Ron Johnson, and Justin Gard. Let's go. And welcome, everybody, into the P.J. Fleck Show, joined by <laughs> the one and only P.J. Fleck himself for another season. Gopher fans are fired up. K-Fans, Justin Gard, former Gopher wide receiver Ron Johnson here as well for another edition of the P.J. Fleck Show. I'm Pierre Nisham. P.J., good to be back with you again for another season out here at the State Fair. The fans are fired up. What has you fired up for another season here, Coach? Boy, Gopher I tell you, Gopher. right before the show, I'm more confident than I've ever been before one of these shows. This is great. Uh, it's wonderful to see our entire state here. Last year, we couldn't come as a football team with all the things that were going on, but I know our players are really excited to be back. Uh, it's great to see our entire state here, north, south, east, west, rural, urban. Everybody's here. It's what Minnesota's all about. I saw you munching on some cheese curds earlier. What's next on the food menu? Uh, fried olives. Okay, fantastic. <laughs> I go cookies first. Start okay. with dessert. Cookies first, then the cheese, then the olives. And then I open it up to all the new stuff. <laughs> Fantastic. I like an open mind as we head into the football season. What, and speaking of the football season, you're back again at the helm. But what is this, your sixth season now? What has you fired up about this particular group? Uh, of this players? team is so fun to coach. Uh, They're the most committed team I've coached. Uh, since our last year at Western Michigan. And that's no disrespect to everybody. We have a level of commitments. These guys are all in. They've been all that way since January, on the field, off the field, academically. They're absolutely crushing it. Um, we got some guys that are married, right? We got, <laughs> we got two guys married now, two more engaged. Love is in the air at Minnesota. Um, yeah, and these guys, but everything we put in front of them, we talked about breaking the boring. Every day was something new, and these guys just absolutely came after it every day, and I couldn't ask for more. And, Coach, I mean, you brought back your offensive coordinator who had been here before, so he's new but familiar with this team. Uh, what has that done for the offense? Yeah, it was interesting uh, when we had, you know, Kirk come back because, you know, you know – what the system looks like and then he leaves and then you get a chance to hire him back and he gets a chance to go to Penn State learn a different system be under different coaches then he goes to West Virginia gets that same experience and then learn the things he learned when he was here and then kind of morph it all into one and then also come back and still get to coach the same players yeah. that were here before <laughs> you left and I think that's really a treat he's really enjoyed his year being back here you can tell I think he enjoys the camaraderie of that quarterback room uh, and uh, he's one of the best to ever do it. So we're, we're very thankful to have him back. On the defensive side, your defensive coordinator, Joe Rossi, has talked a lot about the secondary and the depth, and everybody knows about Newbin and Howden and obviously Justin Wally, who we're going to talk about. But how have you developed such depth where he thinks it might be the deepest secondary you've ever had here? Yeah, recruiting, 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 right? I mean, that's the number one name of the game. So for us, I mean, you look at the safety position, you got Tyler Newbin and Jordan Howden who have started a ton of games for us here. Not only that, gotten better. They put themselves in a position to, as they leave here, play at the next level. We got two been for, Newbin for two more years, but I highly doubt that. <laughs> uh, corner position, Terrell Smith, and you look at Justin Wally, and then we added some depth in the transfer portal, um, you know, with, 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 with uh, Ryan and, and Benny. Uh, and Beanie and, and those those guys have done a great job and you look at the safety room even beyond that We've got guys that have played a ton of football So probably the deepest secondary we've had one of the most athletic secondaries We've had fastest secondaries we've had but like we challenged our team how tough will we be and we're not talking how macho tough We're talking about being able to control our mind be confident be committed challenge each other uh, and overcome adversity So they responded really well lately Justin mentioned Justin Wally, and you know this is a kid who had a heck of a freshman year. Just seems to have a nose for the football. What did you see from him last year, and what does he need to do to kind of elevate his game to get to the next stage this season? Well, I think last year what you saw was an athlete playing corner, and he was so gifted, but I thought he was so young, and he didn't really know the position as much as he knows it now. He wasn't as technical. He wasn't as fundamentally sound. Uh, probably wasn't even as confident. Watch him. I mean, he catches the ball like a receiver. He hits like a linebacker. Uh, he's got great instincts, and that's only one more year developed. And I, the sky's the limit for this young man, and uh, Paul Haynes has done a great job coaching him. <laughs> We've moved him around corner. Uh, he's done some nickel stuff. Uh, Flip Dixon is going to fill in at that nickel position, which gives us lots of size, strength. I mean, he looks like a linebacker, but he's truly a safety. So um, these guys have fed off each other. Uh, Justin's gotten a lot better and uh, deserves a lot of credit. Yeah, Coach, as a former player, I remember training camp, and there was always like a memory or a moment that happened, whether it was a, a guy falling asleep on the field and forgetting, you know, whatever was going on, <laughs> or a prank on a coach. Um, you know, you guys do a ton of stuff. Kendrick Lamar, you go out to basketball games. What's been your – in your sixth season, what's been your favorite moment this year in camp so far? I think the senior talks. 
uh, that we don't film. You know, we keep that all in-house. Um, watching these 14, 15, 16 young men pour their hearts out of what they learned from the program, uh, advice to all the young players. It's a very emotional night. Mm -hmm. uh, we did it the last night of training camp, which would have been Tuesday. That's my favorite part. Mm -hmm. The entertainment part, the Kendrick Lamar, the basketball <laughs> game, all the food that they get to eat, the, 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 the you know, the – uh, the water park they go to, all the things we do. We still got some things coming up this weekend they don't even know about. That's my favorite because you watch these guys go from boys to men uh, on the field and off the field. And I'm not talking about just the NFL. I mean, Jack Kern called me the other day. He's like, will you write me a letter of recommendation for dental school? I mean, we've got dentists. we got orthopedic surgeons. we got teachers, lawyers. That's what's awesome about when you coach. Uh, not everybody's going to play in the NFL. And for them to share their story of what they've learned in the program means a lot. Back to on the field, defensive line, you lost some guys to the NFL, as we know, but you feel like you're going to be maybe deeper than even a year ago. How important is that? Um, why do you feel that, first of all, and how important is it for what you want to do defensively? Yeah, I think defensive line is the hardest position to recruit, develop, uh, get to stick around. It's difficult um, because there's such uh, great athletes in terms of the size you're looking for. Not every defensive lineman can play offensive line. Not every offensive line can play D-line. It's a very different position. But when you look at us, there's 11, 12 guys that are all long, big, strong, played a lot of football for us. We lost a lot of starts, but these guys are the next guy in, and they're ready to play. And they've worked really hard. We've had a very physical offseason uh, in training camp and spring ball. They've developed a lot. This team does what they have to do, uh, and they want to do it. And then they also do a lot of unrequired work on their own. But across the board, those 11 and 12 guys, I have no problem rotating in, not only platooning two teams, but maybe even three teams. And that only helps us as we go through the season at the beginning, middle, and end. On the offensive side, last year, obviously, it was a devastating blow when Mo went down with the Achilles injury. As a coach, when a player goes down with that kind of injury, especially a player that has played for you for so many years, what has the road been like for him getting back? What are the conversations that you have with him to keep his spirits up and to keep him thinking, hey, you know what, I can get back to football next year? Yeah, they have to be very transparent conversations. You know, they're very hard conversations to have, and you're, you're staring down the barrel of reality. Yeah. And uh, it's not like you can make that go away with a magic wand. The only way to be able to get through that is keeping your oar in the water, keep rowing the boat, stay positive, be confident, lead yourself, and get around the voices around you that are going to only make you your, your, make your brain fueled with positivity. No negativity. And he'll even tell you the story. I mean, this guy had every NIL deal known to man. He gets hurt, <laughs> it's gone. Yeah. Welcome to the real world, right? And he gets hit with that really quickly. He's done a great job at keeping the attention off of him, giving it to other people. That's what leaders do. Um, and he has just put his head down and worked really hard. Uh, he looks terrific. I'm not here to say he looks better than where he was because I think he just looks better. And we talk about coming out of COVID, a new normal. Don't compare it to the old normal. It's a new normal. He's a new Mo. And uh, it's going to be really exciting to watch him go through the year. And I'm glad he came back. But he didn't come back for the NFL. He didn't come back for money. He came back to make sure he gets to write his own end or give him a chance to write the own end that he wants for his teammates. Um, and that says a lot about him. When you think about Tyler uh, Tyler Johnson, Rashad Bateman, and then Chris Altman Bell was that third piece in that puzzle. Now you have Chris Altman Bell, Michael Brown Stevens. In your opinion, who can become that Chris Altman Bell of two years ago under Kirk Shiraka now in this offense? Well, you got Daniel Jackson, you got Dalen Wright, you got Clay Geary, you got a young freshman by the name of Ike White. Uh, you got a lot of guys who are, are waiting for their opportunity. Clay Geary would have had a lot of snaps last year, but he got hurt. Mm -hmm. uh, and we had a lot of guys. And we lost five tailbacks. We had four receivers out half the year. It was We lost nine playmakers, right? And we can't yeah. go into the free agency and go pull them from other teams. So it, it is what it is. And we still won nine games. So – watching that type of resilience happen with that team and then add back to playmakers and having a lot more at that position allow us to do a lot of other things. Yeah. And I know you talked about the receivers, but our tight ends. Yeah. I mean, Brevin Span forms as big of a weapon as we've had, and yeah. now you add him into the mix. Our running backs are great pass catchers. So we have a lot more than we've had. It might not be this first-round draft pick star that everybody's focused on, but we're, we're, we're really strong in the numbers that we have. You mentioned Dalen Wright. I think a lot of people saw the, the clips from a year ago. Ohio State stands out. Even Wisconsin, a couple big plays. And they think he has that star potential. So how does he get from point A to point B, and, and how has he kind of approached this offseason? He's, he's worked really hard this offseason. If there's one guy who really, really loves the game of football and treats it like – 
going into the backyard to play some hoops. It's him. He loves football. He loves football. We do the catapult system in terms of how much workload people have. He's always in the top two every single practice. He's just got to keep staying with that. He's just got to, like we say, keep rowing the boat. That's what he's got to keep doing because the more he's here and the more he keeps growing, the better he's going to get. He hasn't even come close to how good he's going to be. He is freaky, naturally talented, uh, and we're just confining that you know, into the role that he's going to have. And we look forward to big things from him. But it's not like that's the only guy we have. Right. So uh, I think he's going he's gonna to benefit from having a team around him of wide outs that can really make plays. How old is Tanner now? Like 47? He's like 38, 39. <laughs> How many senior kids. speeches okay. has he given? <laughs> well, it's got to be at least two or three, yeah, he right? Gave two. He gave two. Yeah. Uh, New material or did he recycle? <laughs> well, he, it was brand new. Uh, brand, good for and, him. Uh, it was almost a, an extension off what he did last year. Yeah. He went last. Uh, go figure. And it was special. I mean, he's married now. You know, Carter Shaw's married. You know, Cole Kramer's engaged. Yep. You know, John Michael Schmidt's engaged. Like I said, <laughs> love's in the air. It's amazing. Uh, we've got all these lovebirds on our team, man. It's But it is amazing. He doesn't go just back to the dorms anymore. No. He goes back home to be husband Tanner. Yeah, no doubt. No, no doubt. And lo- not only is love in the air, football is in the air here at the Minnesota State Fair. When we come back, we got a game to talk Let's about as the, the Gophers book. get set You're to take on New Mexico State Flex just a week show. from now. Stick around. More to come here on the PJ Flex Show. Let's row the boat. You're watching the P.J. Flex Show. Welcome back, everybody, to the P.J. Flex Show, the first show of the season taking place from the Minnesota State Fair. Let's turn the page to next week. You guys got a home game, first of three straight home games to begin the season against New Mexico State. What do you anticipate seeing from the Aggies? I know you haven't, they haven't played a game yet, can't really look at tape, but what do you anticipate seeing from yeah, the Aggies? Yeah, we really don't know yet. Uh, they're new staff, uh, you know, new, new systems. Uh, we've done everything we can to find out what they're going to do in terms of just watching different things here and there and, and past coaching stops. But other than that, we don't really know. I mean, we'll find out on Saturday a little bit because they play before us. Um, and we've kind of structured our schedule kind of around that. So we just look forward to seeing all of our fans there. And, uh, you know, I know our players are looking forward to playing a game. Yeah, and you, you guys have found a way to schedule three home games to start the season. How important or crucial is that for the start of the season to be able to play at home, not have to travel, and get, you know, the first three games out of the season? Yeah, I mean, things have <laughs> – in college football, it's become a lot easier to travel. So, I, you know, I, I just like that we're home for our fans, for our, fan, our, 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 our players' families, mm-hmm. you know, being around them a little bit more. But, you know, we'll play anywhere. That's the one thing that, <laughs> that, that we've had this mentality is at home or away. You've got to still play the same game. We right. just love playing at home because of Huntington Bank Stadium, our crowd, our fans, um, and, the, and the tradition we've had. So we're really, really thankful we open up with three home games. But – Number one's the only thing that matters. We can call you a veteran coach here now because it's year six, which is amazing to me for sure. I'm sure it feels like longer to you <laughs> at times. But you've seen the West kind of continue to come up from the bottom up where it, maybe six years ago there were some wins you looked at right away as fans. I don't think you can do that anymore in the West Division with how everybody's kind of improved. How do you view everything this year? Well, I think as a coach you, you've never looked at it that way. But I think that you know when you look at top to bottom coaching, uh, you look at the players, you look at the recruiting, look at the transfer portal. Uh, NIL, I mean, I think the Big Ten's as, bi- as good as it's ever been, top to bottom. Uh, and when you even look at uh, Big Ten head coaching changes, I think last year, I don't think it was any. Right. Right. And that might be the first time in a long time that that's ever happened. So I think there's a lot of cultural sustainability in all the programs, which make it very difficult. And you never know what you're going to get on every Saturday, which makes it really exciting for the fans. You have a very experienced group on your hands. Earlier this week, we found out that six of your seniors have been added to the Senior Bowl watch list. How much pride do you take in a coach? No, I mean, you just have a group six. I mean, six, that's a healthy number to be added to that watch list. That's a lot. I mean, when you kind of look back over the, f- the past few years, I forgot what the stat was, but I think we're in the top three or four of having players drafted or are or, or in the NFL right now in the, in the entire Big Ten. And uh, we're proud of that, you know, because like I said, we want everybody that comes in our program, we want their dream to come true. And if that's the National Football League, we want to make that possible. And we don't have a bunch of four-star, five-star players. There's a developmental program on and off the field. If we can maximize their potential, they're going to get a shot to do that. And to have that preseason with six guys named to that, that watch list, that's great. But it's just that, a watch list. Yeah. So <laughs> they've got to be able to go through the year, take care of business. But it's exciting to show where the, where the future of the program's headed, and we've – steadily got to this point and we'll continue to change our best and grow you mentioned that 
some of the players are going to be around here throughout the state fair and stuff like that. What do you notice they gravitate towards to when they come to the state fair? Is it the food? Is it the ride? Is it the games? What do you notice about the players? Oh, there it, it's a little bit clicky when you're talking about when you get to the state fair because there's the oldies who know where to go with the food, they know which <laughs> lines are going to be long, where to hit first, and then you got the guys who just see it as a fair, love to ride rides, they go over there, and then you got the guys who want to the win the stuffed animals for some reason. <laughs> yeah, no they're doubt. They're going to spend whatever their per diem is that they get to go yeah. spend on this $1 animal that it makes to, it costs to make. They're going to spend 50 bucks to do it, and then they're going to end up giving it to a kid anyway. So it, it's really interesting. They go there to kind of show off, I think, a little bit too. Uh, but they all have – it's amazing. They all – depending on how many years you've been here, you know how to handle the fair. <laughs> I want to go back to the stuffed animal real quick, though. Isn't that is that not a winning mentality that you want to see develop? It doesn't matter how much it costs. Just as long as you win, whether you beat a 12-year-old, whether you beat a 50-year-old, as long as you win, right? That's well, I'm matter. not saying I haven't done that yeah. myself. Right, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I, I know my, certain- my daughters still have this. Uh, they both have this tight-eyed, massive <laughs> size of Ron <laughs> unicorn in their rooms that – cost a lot of money to make sure. yeah. and it took dad about an hour and a half to finally accomplish it <laughs> but uh we figured it out eventually and uh, got it done i know some certain uh <laughs> late 30s tv anchors that still like to do that from time to time <laughs> but we're not going to talk about that more to come here on the pj flex show the gophers have got some fancy new threads to wear this season we'll show you what we mean when we come back Welcome back to the P.J. Flex Show. Let's row the boat. Welcome back, everybody, to the P.J. Flex Show. P.J., uh, Ron kind of touched on this a little bit early in the show. One thing I've noticed about your group is you guys do so many things off the field together, team bonding activities. You mentioned you went to Kendrick Lamar. I've seen you guys at WWE shows. You go to basketball games. You're at the supper club. You guys are everywhere. How important is that for you guys just to, like, do all of these activities together? I think you guys do more activities than any other team I've ever seen. Yeah, I mean, just it's training camp. You're spending time together. I mean, it's it, it's grueling mentally and emotionally and even physically. So you got to find ways to be able to get them outside that that realm of just your, your locker room and to make them connect in a lot of different environments. And uh, that's part of it. We're going to have to play in a lot of different environments. So get them into uncomfortable. You saw that golf swing. That's an uncomfortable <laughs> golf swing. <laughs> but to do it in front of people builds some confidence. Whoa. And, uh, but put them in different areas where they've got to adapt. Not everybody likes the same music. Introduce them to different types of music. We pick different type of concerts to go to, different venues. But it's incredible, incredibly important for the connectivity of a team to be able to do it in environments that's not just football. I, I really solely believe in that because you're going to get into a lot of hostile environments on the road, and you better find a way to be comfortable pretty quick. Yeah, and when you look at it, we talk about let's transition back to the uniforms. I mean, as a former player, love them. Like, I mean, the black on black. I'm not even go to it. I would have swagged it out. <laughs> I was probably, that was my thing. I was the swaggiest receiver on the field. But <laughs> What, what what went into that when you guys decided to come out with the black uniforms this year? Yeah, we had a version of them last year, but when we ordered them because of the supply chain and COVID, they had to kind of do one that was just kind of made up and uh, had to get to us pretty quickly. Right. Uh, now these are the ones that we actually were supposed to get. They're finally done, finally made the way we wanted them. Uh, and, again, it's not for me. No offense. It's not for you how, how much you want them. <laughs> if you're a traditionalist, you probably hate them. But – it's what the kids really like, and it's an alternate uniform. It's not the uniform we're going to wear all the time, but uh, kids love it. And if you ever go online, I mean, the, the m- amount of fashion these kids are involved in and, yeah. and the ability to, to, to make our program not only very traditional but also keep up with some current trends, make some new current trends, I think it's very important when you're running a program. And the audience that you're speaking to, 17 to 22-year-old. And Ron. And Ron. And Ron. <laughs> and, and if you're the swaggiest, the yeah. self-proclaimed swaggiest, on this show you probably are, unfortunately, for the rest of us. No doubt How do you decide it. as you go through a year? Because you do have more uniform combinations than ever before. Back when you guys were playing, it was here's your home, here's your road. That's it. But how do you kind of decide? Because it's a big reveal every week, too, what you're going to wear. Yeah, there is. Our, our players look forward to it. Yeah. Uh, you know, you, they, they look forward to a lot of things besides the game as well. So, uh, we well, sometimes we'll allow the players to pick. Sometimes we let our equipment manager, Brady Gagnon, qu- uh, pick. Sometimes I'll do it based on what we're going to do. I'll give them options. I'll give the leadership council choices because 
our equipment staff works incredibly hard, and you've got to get these decisions made weeks in advance so they can start preparing for those. We have so many different color combinations, helmet combinations, and every one of those decals just don't right. magically appear on a new helmet. They have to right. be placed on there by an individual. That Goldie piece, it doesn't just, you know, unstick something and stick it on there. Every eyebrow, eye, everything is meticulously put in the same spot. And we have five or six different type of brand helmets, so they all fit differently. So you take that into account, uh, into account and you got to make your decision pretty quick. All right, we've talked about the food. Uh, we know that the players like to ride the ride. Are you a rides guy? I am a rides okay, guy. Okay, okay. Which which ride will you be riding? I'm not going to ride any at the state fair. <laughs> not? No, I'm not. I'm not a. I'm not a state fair ride guy. I'm more of like a Disney World, uh, yeah. you know, Valley Fair yeah, roller coaster. Okay, okay. I just don't. I don't have enough. One, I don't have enough time here. Uh, being with with you fine folks. You know, <laughs> so, we could cut the show in half if you really want to ride the rides. We could do a we whole like, segment you know, okay. Okay. of our show of ride and rides. Yeah. I, Slides right here. It's never been done before in <laughs> local TV <laughs> news. No one's ever gone down a slide. Zipper. Yeah. yeah, oh, Do yeah. Do have the zipper here? Do we have the zipper here? Remember uh, how many times you get shut down because somebody threw up on it? They yes. can sprinkle <laughs> some of that dust on there, send yeah. the next person on. <laughs> I, yes. My, that, that's what I come for is the throw up uh, off, yeah. the, off the rides. I love the it. The vomit breaks you got to take. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Concerts. Uh, you, were t- you were singing Counting Crows uh, during the break. I know you were. Looking forward to any shows here at the Grandstand? Well, you said Bush was playing here. I Bush think, is think, playing here as well. Tremendous. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't get, you know, we, we got a job to do. Our job is the football. Yeah. That's our entertainment for everybody else. We're a little bit caught up in that. But, yeah. um, you know, I think Kenny Chesney was in the Twin City area the other day. Would yep. have loved to see that. But, sure. Um, I'm a big Van Morrison fan. Okay. I'm not sure if anybody yeah, knows absolutely. That. Yeah, we absolutely. We got one person that knows who Van Morrison absolutely. is Absolutely. We're not, not only do we have one person who knows Van Morrison, we got a lot of people who are Gopher football fans right here. Coach, thank you it. so much for joining us here on the P.J. Fleck Show. First of many coming up later on the season as the Gophers get ready to kick off their season next Thursday against New Mexico State. We will see you for the pregame show next week right here on Fox 9.